You know, Mike told me that the Global Health Group is one of the most energetic on the entire campus, so I expect a more robust response. I'm going to try it again. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, that's so much better. It, it reassures me that our future is in, uh, is in uh, good hands. Uh, uh, Mike, thanks for inviting me, and to, to all uh, uh, gathered, welcome. I'm delighted to, to be here this evening. Now, when Mike introduced me, or Dr. Merson, he said that I was a uh, chancellor uh, here at Duke. How many of you know what a chancellor does? You can raise your hand. Don't feel bad, my mother's still asking me. Uh, okay, well, in short, a chancellor works on behalf of the students and the staff and the faculty to really help fulfill your individual visions, but also to create programs that help us work together uh, for a shared vision. And the shared vision that we're celebrating tonight is the ways in which we connect you along with staff and faculty with the world to begin to improve lives globally. And so I'm delighted to see that we have so many students ranging from undergrads to graduate students involved in uh, research uh, at this time that's globally based. I understand that we have over 40 posters with uh, 70 uh, plus students involved in various uh, projects. I'm also told that your body of work collectively is quite diverse and spans the entire universe. I'm looking at countries here in terms of as far away uh, locations as South Africa, Ghana, India, Sri Lanka, Madagascar, Colombia, China, the Peruvian, Amazon, Honduras, uh, and Haiti. This is a very, very impressive array of programs, and it reflects uh, the diversity of interest, uh, but it also reflects uh, just how far we reach through you at, Glu at, at, at uh, Duke around the world. The projects also, uh, I understand, have some very interesting and creative titles, which I expect reflect some very interesting and creative work. Here are a couple that come to mind. Uh, Shining Evolutionary Light on Global Health Challenges, Assessing Human Health in Rural Madagascar. Another one. Evaluation of a distance-based education program for Ghanaian nurse anesthetists. And finally, early life migrations impact on health status in later life among the Chinese population. Um, collectively, as a group, you've also looked at many, many issues. And when I look at the list of just some of the problems and concerns that you've addressed, again, it represents issues and or conditions that are quite burdensome throughout the world. We use this term disability adjusted life years to try to capture that burden. And certainly when I think of some of the conditions or diseases, illnesses that you've addressed, they represent a big chunk of the disability adjusted life years that are uh, imposed on uh, countries around the world. Uh, diseases or conditions, health issues like sickle cell anemia, malaria, mental health, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, eye health, family planning, child well-being, and autism, just to name a few. So you can understand why certainly the faculty who are involved in these projects with you, as I am as an administrator and leader at Duke, or proud of you and what you are achieving through your uh, research that indeed does span the world. You know, when we think about unlocking some of nature's best kept secrets and we think about producing new knowledge, we often think of this as kind of on the distant horizon. But the truth is, we see research unfolding here, developing new knowledge on a day-to-day -day basis. And for a sterling example of what we uh, aspire to in our institution, we need look no further than a laboratory, which is right around the corner here, 
uh, the laboratory of a pretty renowned chemist now, Paul Modridge. How many of you have heard of Paul Modridge? Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, that, uh, well, for those of you who didn't know, on another planet in the last couple of weeks, uh, he won the Nobel Prize in chemistry, and he is a Duke faculty member. And for those of you who haven't heard me speak, I take full credit for him receiving that. I'm trained as an epidemiologist. Mike didn't tell you this. And we do before and after studies all the time. Last year I was not here, and we did not win a Nobel Prize. This year I'm here, and we won a Nobel Prize. Mike told you I came here in April. I, in fact, arrived April 1st. Last year, we did not win a national championship. <laughs> this year, we won a national championship on April 6th. Okay? There's a strong correlation there. <laughs> so I take full credit for that. But no, seriously, um, we are very proud of you. Uh, and you do indeed represent uh, the future of science, of medicine, nursing, health, uh, education. And so just based on what I'm seeing today and what I've heard from Mike, uh, we know that the best is yet to come and that our future is in good hands because of you. And so I'll conclude my remarks by also thanking those of, who have supported our students, and that includes family members, uh, friends, uh, certainly uh, donors and other supporters who are in the audience. It certainly includes our staff, um, who uh, in many cases are the unsung heroes when it relates to our research enterprise and achievements. And I'm constantly reminding our staff that, staff, when you hear about a breakthrough or you read about a uh, discovery, um, uh, some achievement, you should stick out your chest as well because we would not be where we are if it were not for our staff uh, who form the underpinning of so much that goes on. And then finally, I would say thank you to our faculty who have served as very generous uh, uh, mentors uh, of our students in helping you to fulfill uh, your aspirations as, a spur as, as, as aspiring uh, researchers and as uh, future leaders in health, locally, nationally, and globally. Thank you for what you're doing.